All right, well, continuing with the shotgun saga, we've uh, we just got off the Remington Model 31, and uh, we mentioned the Model 10. I thought I'd go backwards a little bit. I, I showed uh, one that I don't think I've ever he had here on this channel. This was a fairly recent acquisition. It's a uh, Model 10 that I bought that I wanted to use for uh, trap because the one that I have, the long-term, long-time friend of this channel is the 1927 uh, Model 10 here. The, um, the military marked guy. We got the, uh, the P down here. We got the... Uh, bomb over here. I was never really sure if these markings were real, you know, were, were legitimate. Um, the LU on the barrel dates to 1927. Um, the thing with this guy is, it's short, it's like a 19-inch barrel and a cylinder choke. So, um, it's kind of like out of the running for any trap shooting, but man, this thing, gorgeous, right? I mean, this is a, it's a really cool example of a Model 10. It's in decent shape. So I uh, couldn't turn it down, but couldn't really shoot trap with it. And the, the serial numbers fall into the range. Here's the, uh, once again, the Combat Shotguns Complete Guide by Canfield. Got to love this book. And he's got in here the numbers with the serial number. is right around in this, somewhere around over here. It fits in. For a bunch of riot guns that were donations, World War II donations to the U.S. Navy. Um, so I don't know, it might... Might actually fit in there and be one of those. Just uh, wasn't really able to delve a tremendous amount into the history of that one. But um, I shot trap with it once or twice. And of course, you can imagine with an 18-inch barrel cylinder choke, you hit a few. But uh, it's just kind of like a novelty. You're not really being serious shooting around like that. But this guy came my way and uh, is an interesting one. This technically is not a Model 10. This is... 1909 production, 1908 is when they hit the streets, technically. They actually hit the streets a little earlier than that. In 07, and maybe even a little bit in 06, there was this um, champion shooter named Frank Real. And uh, this guy was spotted. There were some uh, pictures of him taken with a shotgun that nobody knew what the hell it was. And he kept quiet about it and didn't say anything, but he was such a... He was a friend of uh, Remington. He promoted Remington products. So um, back then it was called, it was called the Remington Repeating Shotgun Model 1908. That it was, that's what it was called. And in 1911, with the creation of Remington Arms Union Metallic Cartridge Company, came the Model 10 designation for it. Um, but it was introduced in the 08, by Remington Arms Company, in the Remington Arms Company catalog is the Remington Repeating Shotgun. And uh, this guy is uh, 12 gauge, 30 inch barrel, full choke. It's uh, four plus one round capacity. Oh, I wrote that, but I don't, I'm not sure. This maybe takes more. No, I, well, I guess not. I guess it is four plus one. I'm, I'm thinking it's five plus one. I think I, I think I might have uh, miss, uh mismeasured the magazine tube but um regardless let's get into it what i figured i would do with this thing is show it around a little bit um and uh maybe we'll just i'll show you the disassembly on this thing not just take it apart maybe we'll disassemble it see the thing about the model 10 i love this is a Pedersen design by the way so you know i'm a browning head but you know what i'm not uh I'm not afraid of giving credit where credit is due. Pedersen, even Browning gave Pedersen credit. Uh, his stuff was awesome. And uh, I like his designs. This one was considered overly complicated. And it's, uh, see, Browning's designs had a way of, when they would wear, they would actually wear into where you needed it to be kind of thing. I, I, I don't know how to explain it any better than that. But the wear was it was kind of like accounted for, like they, it, Browning planned the wear to make the gun work into its sweet spot. Whereas uh, 
A lot of other manufacturers, you know, a lot of other designers didn't. When they made it, it was perfect. And then as it wore, it would get finicky. It wouldn't work quite right. This is one of those guys. Now, if you could buy a brand new uh, Model 10, as a matter of fact, this one is so, it's so, it's like 1927 was close to the end of production. They stopped making these in 29. Um, this thing crisp, you know what I mean? Like the feel of it, the way it loads and everything is, uh, feels good. Uh, this guy, not so much so. I'm not sure if this is going to work out as a steady trap shotgun for me because I can't be fumbling around at the line, you know what I mean? And uh, it is a takedown. These things are takedown. And uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this on camera. Let me zoom in a little bit. See if we get in here. See, I'm not so much concerned about this little bit of pitting and stuff that's there, but this concerns me. I don't know if you could, if you could see this. There's a little bit of movement there. It's so little that I don't even know if it's going to show on camera. You could see it. You could see it here. See that little bit of movement. So there is adjustable. Now uh, the other one, twenty-seven, model, the uh, year twenty-seven one I have here, has a certain type of adjuster that this one does not have, but it doesn't have this screw. Um, I don't. I'm not going to take this one down to show you, but there's a. Uh, maybe I'd be able to find a picture of it. There's a. Uh, a screw in here that you uh, that you take out and then you can adjust the ring um you could see here that this uh this screw is not on this one so i'm thinking because this one doesn't have that screw that comes out that maybe this has something to do with it and uh we'll poke around this is going to be this is going to be uh totally uh you know just me and you here knocking around uh it's not the easiest shotgun you're not you're not always successful on the first shot um with putting it together and stuff like that you know it's it's weird so uh might not have just all slapped together but we'll do this uh, together go back so i can show you exactly what i did right there because sometimes this throws people for loops even so uh where were we so the magazine tube you want to um, you want to unlock this. Where are we? Sorry. All right. Let's get back. Got a little ahead of myself there. All right. So we're locked together here. Uh, the pump open. Open the action. And uh, we press this little button here. This little button here. Bink. It's that to open up, and then we turn it. When we turn it, it unlocks it, so we can, number one, pull the slide forward. No, first we have to unlock the magazine tube, actually. So we pull this forward. Now we'll see the interrupted thread here come out. Now, if we... See, I'm messing this up already. Let's... Close the action first. Okay, then we press this button. Sorry. Turn this. Let's start from square one. Turn this. Now, boom, the interrupted thread comes out. Then, when we pull the pump, it's going to release. It's going to come all the way up to the top here. And it's going to release this arm from the bolt. Then there's nothing stopping it from now turning. Careful with that interrupted thread here. And, uh, comes off so yeah no sorry no adjusting anything here there is a screw there hmm we have to take a close look at that later when we're up to that but uh let's put this off on the side for now and let's get into here with this guy so now with this guy we have to have the um we have to have the buttstock off in order to go any further. In order to disassemble this gun, we have to have the buttstock off. So 
So yeah, look at this old school. Be careful with these and don't put them on too tight. Look at this old school uh, Remington Arms Company. <laughs> And the chip. Gotta love the chip. Chip. Now we do the long screwdriver. Let's back out a little bit here. This is always fun. The long screwdriver. Ah, you can do these by feel, even though it really makes sense for you to look down there. Now you don't want to gall anything, but if you feel around, there it is. If you feel around, you'll find it. And then once you find it, and you know you're screwing, don't stop screwing. Just keep going. Even when you think you went all the way, just keep going. This way, you don't have to go back in for that second round. Nice. Right off. Beautiful. Take a look at the bolt. This thing, when I got it, was a disaster. Even that bolt was a disaster. This gun was a mess. So uh, it's cleaned already, so uh, you don't have to worry. <laughs> you know, but whoa, is this thing disgusting? All right, let me get in here. So now you're left with just the receiver. Nice and easy. So uh, you might have different versions of how these screws are in. This one has a capture screw. So you want to uh, first take out the, uh, might be a little small. Will that fit? You want to first take out like the screw that locks it down. Let me see, what, what screw head did I use on this guy? Make sure you're using the right screwdrivers. This is a, for my Wheeler set, this was a weird one because I couldn't use the right width to get it in this slot. So I had to use this one. I had to use a, th a thinner width there we go. So that's like the lock screw. And we switch. Doing great here. And we switch to the wider screwdriver for the larger screw. I'm going to get it together here. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm going to get it all together. Now, oh, I think that's why I had this one. I think we'll switch to that for this one, right? Yeah, that's why I had that out. Got these tool skills. I was going to do this video a couple of days ago, and all of a sudden got uh, inundated with stuff. So there we go. Those are the only screws you need to take out to take this out. Now, this just kind of slides out of here on rails. See it? But uh, pay attention to how it goes in, how everything goes in. You'll see there's like a little arm on there that we had to kind of watch where that goes later. All right, now we're left with a receiver and a bolt. So now you'll notice there's like a uh, little like uh, piece that comes out over here. Like a, it's kind of like a... Uh, What's that movie again with the box? The puzzle box? With the pinhead guy? I forgot. Well, everyone always uses a screwdriver and I'm always like, ah, you don't need to pry that with a screwdriver, but you know what? You really need to kind of get in there and just bump that with a screwdriver. You really do. So once you get it moving like that, then you're all right. Hellraiser, there we go. And you could uh, slide that piece out. So later, if you notice how that came out, it kind of had like a little spring-loaded feel here to this part that's sticking out. So don't worry, just as long as you notice that, that there was a little bit of a boink, it made a noise, you know what I mean? So when you see, when you take something apart or you see something and it just shifts, you know later on, you're, that's a pivotal point where you're gonna have to have things in place. Now to get the bolt out, here's the thing. You don't wanna, this is a striker-fired gun, so you don't wanna release the striker if you could help it but in order to get this out of here you have to so i'm going to use wood i'm going to use my dowel let me see if i can get a pointy one this one's kind of broken that could be a good thing 
So I want to use my dowel because I don't want to scratch anything. But right in here, you could kind of grab onto a piece there. And moving that away is going to let you be able to bring the bolt up. And you might have to do that twice. You might have to do it once to get it to this point, And then again, you'll see there's like a spring-loaded part right here. <sighs> Got a little piece of wood in there. Better to get wood in there that you'd clean out later than to scratch something up bad or something, you know. But I can't this time I can't get it in there now again. Don't worry, just be patient though. Maybe from this angle if I could. Yeah, there we go. If I could pry that and then pull this up at the same time. I know I'm blocking everything now, but there we go. So you see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm prying that part away. Now you just kind of push it forward. Should come out now. So now when this comes out, oh, I think there's one more. I think there's a, it's a three-stage thing of getting this out of the way. Let's see, one more time, pushing this out of the way. Let's try it one more time. There we go. Oh, you know what? You can kind of push forward on this and it makes this whole assembly move. See that? So maybe that, that works. And now when it starts coming out, you know you didn't release the striker when you see this block sticking out of this of the bolt. That means the striker is still back, charged. That's what you want. And then uh, when you take it out now, the flapper, this flapper part is going to come out right with it. And that's it for cleaning. This is really where you want to be. I mean, this video is on how to take the bolt apart. I don't think there's necessarily any reason to take the bolt completely apart. You could gun scrub the crap out of it or soak it and then blast it um, with uh, compressed air till it's bone dry and then oil it. Um, if you really felt compelled to, excuse me, as filthy as this, the inside of this receiver was so caked up with crap. It was unbelievable. Um, I felt like I really did a nice thing to it by cleaning it. Now, this flapper, you're going to see different incarnations of this flapper. See this guy, how it's kind of like, it looked like they, it fit on over a pin, and then it was like hammered on, like cut, so like a, like to fit, and then polished, hand polished to fit perfectly. See how it kind of has that look to it? And so this is like kind of springy right here or whatever. The newer ones actually have a pivot with a spring. I mean, it's like, this is like an, uh, an older version. This I would think would be the first version. That's kind of like why I wanted to take this apart and show you is that this is literally the first version of this gun. You know what I mean? And the, uh, this rides inside this cam here. See that this is what moves the flapper and controls it. But this flapper right here was kind of like the downfall of this gun because the edge right here, this leading edge of this, is where it wears. You can see just by looking at it that the whole thing is nothing's really touching or rubbing all that much except this edge is polished, smooth, and round where it probably was a little bit sharper in its day, like when it was new. But uh, this wear, every time a little bit comes off of here, makes it just not load as good. Just and it's it's a little clumsy right now because of this part. Uh, replacing this could potentially help, but you see the way it's polished and fit. I mean, who knows? Just, just I think it just, it's just kind of like one of those it is what it is kind of things. And now here's this adjuster, okay? Here's what we're dealing with with this adjuster. So over here on the newer ones, and when I say newer, you know what I'm talking about, like into the teens, into the 20s. There's a screw here that when you turn it, it has a kind of like a geared thing like with teeth that connect to this ring and then you're able to turn the ring when you loosen it you could turn the ring and then slide it back up so it engages again and then you tighten it down this adjustment right here it actually has a gauge right here that's to determine you know that's this ring would make it seal tighter and tighter and you see down here this 
spring down here. When you have the barrel on, it's not a good idea to run cleaning rods through here because you hit this and bend it up. And when that gets bent up, it's not good. I think part of why this isn't working good is it's been bent up. I bent it back down a little bit and it got better, but I think it needs to go a little further. It's pinned in, and it's really tough to bend this further down when it can't go down. You know what I mean? You have to kind of take it off, shape it, and then put it back on again, and I don't know how to do that. It's not like it's a screw. It's like a pin where there's nothing on the other side. So, so that's what I'm dealing with. There's that. <laughs> there's the... Uh, uh, and then there's this. It's a few things all together. Uh, what I really wanted to do is I want to try something while you're here. I want to try... I'm wondering if I take out this screw. I tried to turn this just on its own. And I can't turn this. So I don't have a spanner wrench per se. But what I use to simulate a spanner wrench... I take uh, this guy. It works really good. It's always perfectly the right size. I can put these two tips right in here. See, I can get pretty good torque right now to turn this, but it feels like it just doesn't want to turn at all. It's like it's locked. Not only that, it looks like this gauge is all the way one way, and that's the way it needs to go to turn out, to come out to make it tighter. But I figure maybe I only need to go a little bit more. Maybe if I loosen this, Let's uh, let's get in here. Let's see where's uh, what fits in here. Is this good? Too big. Let's see if this guy is uh, too thin. I don't want to bend the screwdriver. No, oh, this is good. So now, I thought. This might have something to do with, there's a spring in here. So when this flapper, let's see if we can get in here. Oh, the landscapers are outside. Great, perfect timing, guys. So if this, I don't know, do we have enough light? Let's see if I give you guys more light. Maybe that'll help. Let's see. And this, Where's the hole now? Oh, here's where it bottoms out all the way up here. It's all the way up here, though. See, I don't know why I would have thought that. It bottoms out in this hole up here. See it? And inside that hole, I got to get this in there. Inside that hole, watch this. Look. See how this is springy? Look. I'm pressing this now. This is like spring-loaded. There's a spring in there. So I guess if you... If I stuck something in there or really pried around or tried to, you know, tweezer it out, I'm actually get that spring out of there. Spring's important, and they say that's part of the, part of the reasons why, you know, where, where they, they kind of get messed up and don't work well. And believe me, when I gun scrubbed the crap out of this, and I was very careful to make sure it, it didn't fall out. It wasn't coming out. I didn't want to bend it or break it, so I left it in there. I gun scrubbed right in that hole, you know, got all the gunk out of there. I was real careful to watch to make sure that spring didn't disappear. And all of a sudden, when I go to put it back together, it's not spring-loaded anymore, and I have no idea where it went. Always be very careful when you're cleaning, because you think that you covered everything. Look, even this button right here has a spring in there, you know? you got to be careful. If you don't totally dismantle, um, be careful with your aggressive gun scrub spraying and stuff, and scrubbing. Um, so, it has nothing to do with that. It's way, it's way below. See, that's all the way up here, that spring. It's like up, up in this area, like here. That's got nothing to do with it. And when I take this out, here's what it looks like. And that's weird, right? Like, what did that do? Let me see if I can see in that hole. Let me take a real close look in that hole. Huh. Interesting. I wonder if somehow that's got something to do with it. Let's see if we could turn this now. I'm not going to go crazy. Let's just see if that is what loot is what um, allows this to be free. How do you like that? It turned. Look. Let's put it right 
there. Let's just turn it to, well, let's not go too far. Let's put it, let's go right there. Let's just go there. Wow. You guys. I'm sure that that positive energy. Oh, now I hope it, see, it's not, uh, I don't think it's going to, oh, it did. There you go. I was going to say, maybe now it's not going to screw in because it's past its gauge area, but it's kind of like a little bit of resistance here, but it's going. I'm going to leave it right there for now. And I'll tighten it the rest of the way when I'm sure it, uh, yeah, we could put it all back together and we could just test fit that later. So let's, let's do the reassembly now. Now I'm excited. I, if it, that's one step closer to actually using it for trap. If the if barrel isn't shaking around like that, if it's tight, that would be great. So now reassembly is pretty cool. This is the, uh, this is the part you've all been waiting for. So let's, uh. Let's get some hand oils off of everything first because I'm not going back in here again. This is this is real right here. Let's get some hand oils off of here. You gotta be careful, like you, you trip something over here and it, it it it's what the what this uh what this thing hooks onto somewhere in there. And I think it's lifting that and the striker will snap forward. And if it does, it's really hard to get it back and then putting it together is different i'm sure it's possible but it's different and i'm not really good at that i couldn't get it once and i had to put something in here and push the striker all the way back it was very difficult so just for this procedure that i'm using here this is how we have to do it now see i'm gonna do this best best i could explain it is just stage the flapper right here because this all has to go in together let me, um, let me do the same thing here with, uh, just don't want any disgusting finger sweat. So like stage it right here, kind of like halfway up, halfway flapped. <laughs> and you get this in here. So now the bolt, it kind of like rides down a channel here. Like right there, there's the channel. And with that in there, halfway staged like this, it, with that, that fat end in the hole there, it's gonna go in. And when it goes in, you just make sure that over here, that goes in that hole right there, the springy hole, which it did. Uh, it flapped it down though. I don't, yeah, yeah, there you go. And then it'll it'll goes into its position. And then you go, in and down all right i mean that was pretty easy now this guy he goes here this way you start that in there and then with your finger you just push that into its spring-loaded hole and that'll uh slide all the way down oh, almost lost a chunk of my nail right there that was that was a good one um it's right at the um resistance uh where it just about would rip your nail off but not quite and then uh that's that with that <laughs> now we got to get the trigger mechanism on again trigger assembly and again this rides in a rail there we go and again you just want to look in there you just want to make sure that this goes where it's supposed to, which is on top of there. There you go. And now you're good. And uh, I suppose at this point you could pull the trigger just to make sure it's working right, but I'm pretty sure it's in the right spot. I don't think it'll uh, fit in all the way if it's not exactly in the right spot. Now we take this guy and we put him in here. Let's just locate it. Let's just make sure it's in there and like that and then we'll take the other this long one we'll just locate that one you don't want to jam one of these down because then this might not be in the right position i think we got to switch screw heads here all right sorry if i'm blocking you 
just gonna put a couple of turns on this yeah you know what we'll just go all the way down it's going nice and smooth let's just go all the way down there we go now this guy uh, what screwdriver do we use for that? We used that. Now for mine, I don't know if yours will be the same, but the relief where the little screw fits in is right on the slot. So you go down till you can't go no more. There you go. It's not going to do another turn, another half turn to get to the other slot. So that's where it's, it's this little screw fits in where the slot is. Especially that's, I can see that that's where it always goes because that's enlarged a little bit right there. Now you feel this one out. When this screw head gets down where it's touching the other one, if you feel resistance, adjust that other one. But I got it right in the right spot. Okay, it's not this one. It's this one. Thank you. Don't go crazy with these. This one is just a little, little lock screw true that you don't want to lose it on the trap field you know what i mean but uh don't go nuts with those they're tiny um yeah so there we go so now again any hidden spots that are going to be covered by something we have to do a little bit of a wipe down let's get in there make sure we don't want any premature rust going on we should have tested it really so that we don't go all this far and then it's like whatever if something didn't go together right this button might not be up i could tell something's wrong if the button's not up because that would mean that the striker was forward but the striker isn't forward so this is kind of like a, you could this is like a cocking indicator for you because if it's been if the trigger's been pulled this lays dead sort of i think i gotta check again but i'm pretty sure i'm right uh, now where's the long screwdriver get in here with the long screwdriver I hope most of this was on camera because I'm not really watching the camera I don't have a monitor all right it's all the way forward again I do this by feel I just feel around obviously if you push too hard you're not gonna be able to fall into the screw slot so I just do it nice and easy can tell when I'm going between the screw head and wood that's not where you are there you go see I'm right in the slot right now so don't lose it just stay right there just stay right there oh I think I lost it I lost it it moved all right here we go again I never should have let go once I had it I should have just stuck with it yeah, this can be a pain in the neck. I, I've had time, I've struggled with these, but just out of nowhere, all of a sudden, just on one that you're just like, I, I can't get it. I'm at the right angle. Oh, there we go. I got it. I got it. I'm on it. And again, with these, don't go too tight. You go nuts with it, you crack the wood when it heats up, you know? All right, now, this is going to be cool. You're going to dig this. Now, on the newer model tens you can see inside here i'm gonna stand now i have to make sure you're seeing see that right there it's the uh extractor right the extractor obviously is sitting in the way of you know the barrel you can see this when you're opening and closing it and it's during its normal operation there's a relief here so that it can sit up on top of the barrel but we don't put it together like this. We put it together like this. Or is it like that? It's not, it's like this. So if we put it together like this, how are we gonna, you know what? Let me, let me turn it around this way because this is the way I orientate it when I put it together and it goes like that. All right, so now, if you could see that that extractor is just going to bump into here. The newer ones, they have a relief here too to make it easier. But there isn't one on here. Let me see. I pulled the trigger. The extractor kind of rises if you pull the trigger. Maybe that's a better, better way to do it. Yeah, it kind of just flops right into place now. Let's turn it back again. Let's get that in there. 
How can, can we turn it now? Oh, there we go. That's in there. And we're back. We got it. We got everything. And it's tight. We made it tight. Whew. Okay, guys. Nobody's watching right now. <laughs> it's tight. Make sure everything's snug. That's snug. Well, that needs a little snug, see? So, there we go. It's tighter now. Let's get all this stuff out of the way. Out of the way, out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Let's take a look. What do we got? Feels better, too. It's definitely locked now. It's locked up. Let's, uh, oh, let's get the butt plate on. Most of that struggle was due to the fact that it's now so tight I couldn't turn the magazine tube and lock the, um, I couldn't lock the uh, interrupted thread of the magazine tube because it wasn't, I had to really give it a good, whoops, I had to give it a really good twist into place you saw that like it really had to be turned and locked in that's it couldn't have been any more perfect it's just tight enough to be super snug like that but not anymore and i wouldn't have been able to turn it and lock it together so it was perfect it's now nice and nice and tight i don't think we'll ever have it apart again <laughs> So now I'll never be able to show guns again. So I'll show you what I mean about that flapper. Let's get in here. So this guy, we load right into the tube. Now, when you open the action, round goes underneath this flapper here. And as you pull forward on the handle, it's that flapper that pushes on the shell against that spring that I showed you before. See, this is springy in here now. Spring action. And that flapper rides along the edge of the shell to make sure it gets chambered. But you see what just happened? See how part of it is that it's upside down. I don't think it likes to work so good upside down, but... See how it let go? It needed a little extra. Just like off by like a fraction of a millimeter. And that's what wore off the edge of that flapper. Why it's not pushing them in right. Oh, you got to watch when it ejects. And it does a 180 like that. You have to be really careful. You can't eject it upside down either. So, again, see how it rides along the edge of the shell there for a moment until the shell goes in, and then it's supposed to see what it's doing. But I, I don't think, here's the thing. I think if I, this is definitely, like, exacerbating the problem. If I just go like this, pull the trigger, see, it works. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's working. It's just when you want to know if it's messed up, just go slow and do it like that. So you see where the problem with that flapper would be. But you also, this is still, I, I think it's better since it's tighter. Oh, yeah. We're rocking and rolling. We're shooting trap. Sunday, here we come. We're going to have some video. <laughs> put this thing out on the trap range and uh, strutted stuff. I just blew a light. I just banged into a light and blew a light. Nice. Is this really dead? Unbelievable. Guys, it's been real. This was cataclysmic. Anybody that's still here right now, you are a true Milser Ferrara supporter. Uh, this is my new Model 10. 1909. 1909 vintage and uh that's how i roll with trap i will 
I will shoot a 25 with this thing. And uh, I'm going to put it up there. Got all of this stock. Look at that. This is when, like, some old man sat there and actually created this by hand. That's what it was all about. See you all later. Take care.